Hey guys, in this video, we're going to be talking about something really awesome, which are the updates that Figma has just launched in their config 2022, which ended just, I think a few hours ago, maybe one hour, 45 minutes or something. So let's just get into it. The first thing that you see in front of you is the dark mode. So if we actually just have a look at it, you can enable the dark mode by going here into the preferences, going to the theme and selecting the light or dark. I'm just gonna choose dark. There's also one other way you can enable it, which is pressing command B and then saying use dark mode. And then there you have it, you have dark mode. So that's really awesome. I know a lot of people were actually expecting that. Then we're gonna talk about variable fonts. So what are variable fonts to begin with? Well, variable fonts allow you to have different types of weights of font. Um, so imagine here you have a particular font. I'm just gonna go into this options panel for the font. And as you can see, I don't have the variable option. I'm just gonna, obviously I can update it to get bi bi-directional support, but there are some fonts which have variable fonts and that variable width adjustment and slant adjustment, but some may not have them. So Inter has it. And now as you can see, I can obviously go ahead and say 500, 600, that's fine. But I can obviously be very dynamic about it. I can choose the specific variants that I want of the weight and the slantness of this particular font. And that's again, some amazing stuff that Figma has been launching. The other thing I'd like to bring up is we can talk about animations. Now this is a huge animation thing obviously and let me just go ahead and link this. So I'm gonna go to my prototype, I'm gonna link it and now we have different types of animations, right? I'm gonna go ahead and smart animate it. So again, sorry, smart animate here. And then as you can see, we have the custom Bezier, but we have some other animations as well. Most particularly, obviously we have the gentle animations. As you can see, this is animated. I can obviously go ahead and showcase that to you and see how that looks. But let's just go here and play this animation. But you can see the effects generally. So I'm just gonna click here. As you can see, this is a much gentler animation. We can go ahead and make it quick. So quick is gonna be quick. Then we have the bouncy. The bouncy thing is there. Then we have slow. So the slow thing is there. And then we have the custom spring. Obviously you can go ahead and customize the spring by going here. You can change or tweak the styling. As you can see, the custom spring is gonna look like this and it definitely is really awesome. Obviously in this case, it doesn't really make that much sense. But imagine you had a ball or imagine you had a shape that you particularly want to animate or maybe a button that you wanted to animate, that's gonna look really nice. And just so we're clear, I'm just gonna go ahead and actually just do it so you guys can see it obviously and get in on all of the Figma action. So I'm just gonna go ahead and include an icon, maybe if, if I can have like, let's say a heart icon because I think Figma presented that. So let's just go ahead and add a heart icon here. So here we have the heart icon. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just go increase the icon size to let's say 100. Let's just increase it to 100 and then let's go here and make this slightly bigger, smaller, maybe change the color a bit. Let's just make it red. Sorry, not this one. Let's just make it red error. I think I'll probably have some colors in the error state. And then let's just go ahead and actually increase the size as well. If we just do that, actually let me instead go ahead and make the error state a bit like this. And now if we just go ahead and let's say link this particular heart icon, uh, you should be able to see it in flow two. Let's just go to the flow two. I click on this and as you can see, it has that awesome effect there. And you can have something like that now with these awesome animations. Now that we have that covered, let's talk about something that I'm pretty ex extremely excited about because as you know, like I'm an enthusiast of uh, auto layout in particular. And obviously I am really amazed by some of the features or some of the stuff that you can do with auto layout. But even before that, I'm just gonna talk about how you can adjust the spacing, the padding and all of that stuff directionally by going into the auto layout without necessarily going on the right and just going here and editing it. You can obviously increase it, decrease it by going here. But apart from that, if you just still wanna give, let's say a number to it, I, I can just click on it, I can option click on it and say 24 and that's gonna give 24 on the left and the right. Similarly, I can press option and shift and that's gonna give the spacing all around. Similarly, I mean, I can do a lot of stuff right here. I can just go ahead and press shift and it's gonna 
actually use my nudge amount to increase the spacing and the padding in whatever direction I'm moving. So it's really awesome stuff. And then if we actually go into all of these details, obviously you have the improved layout functionality. You can just click on it and do some really awesome stuff. One thing that I slightly am not a fan of is that they've actually introduced the spacing or the hugging and the fixing and all of that resizing options here, which I previously liked them there because I could just click on it and then resize it, which I can't really do right now. So I'm missing that, but it's, it's, it's okay. So apart from that, let's talk about some of the other updates in auto layout. So in auto layout, if I'm just going to go here, since this, I pretty much, obviously, as you guys know, I use auto layout. You can have negative spacing in auto layout. As you can see, this is negative nine. And this is really awesome. As you can see, if we just go here, I'm just going to include some icons here inside. And let's just go ahead and give it a dark background so you can see them. So I have this icon. Let's just go ahead and include two other icons from here to just show some of the effects that I'm talking about. Here you have an auto layout and then let's include one other. So one other thing that has happened in auto layout, as you can see, the first one is Netflix. The second one is Uber and the third one is Amazon. Now the auto layout items are actually organized in the order that they're actually placed in. And if we actually go ahead and create a negative padding, that actually helps with the overlapping stuff. But let's say if you yourself wanted to actually overlap these elements with the first one on top rather than the last one on top, you can easily do that. You just click with one click of a button. You can just go ahead and do that. And that's just amazing, right? Okay, some other really awesome stuff. Imagine, 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 imagine if you wanted to actually include an element here in the auto layout. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to go to my um, or let's say I'm actually just going to go ahead and create a badge here. So here we have a badge or let's just go ahead and give a number here. Here we have a badge. Let's just go ahead and give it a red color so we can see what badges normally look like. Let's just give it a height and a width. So I'm just going to give it a height of 24 and then let's just give it a width of 24 as well. Reduce the font obviously substantially in order for the match to work and maybe obviously we can center it Round it and imagine if you wanted to include this badge somewhere here at the top Now you can have absolute positioning even though it's included in an auto layout. I can position it absolutely I can click just this button Once I've clicked that this is now positioned. Sorry, not that button. <laughs> apologies Obviously, it's very close. So I this button, this absolute position button, now that you've clicked that, it actually exists within the auto layout. As you can see, this is the auto layout and you can position it however you want without, without necessarily auto layout messing with your stuff. So again, that's extremely important. I know, I mean, it's just amazing. I also wanna talk about some other stuff. Obviously, there are a lot of things that I can do a detailed video about the auto layout as well, but let's just talk about, let's say some buttons. I'm gonna create a component here and I'm going to name this my button. So there are a bunch of component updates as well. As you can see, we have something called properties now. And let me just go ahead and actually include an icon. So I'm going to go ahead and say icon minus right. Let's just go ahead and actually use font awesome to generate the icons here. And let's just go ahead and give it a regular size angle minus right instead of icon minus right and let's just go ahead and actually okay one thing with the auto layout obviously you can increase the spacing in between by dragging these items as well and then here i'm going to say icon angle minus left and here you have a button now imagine you wanted to create previously what we used to do if we, if we wanted to enable certain icons and then create um, a variant with icons not enabled you used to go ahead and hide them but now you have these different properties in the layers panel, in the text item, you have a certain property. As you can see, here's the content. You can go ahead and update the content from here as well. But I can say I want to link that as a component property. And if I do that, I can give it a name, which is going to be the text of the button. That's fine. And then here we have the icon. I can, if I just go ahead and actually show that to you, I just added a text property and now I can easily go ahead and update this text by just by going here. I can add new properties as well. Like for example, I can also have boolean properties depending on whether an icon should be visible or not so i'm going to say icon right and currently it's true i'm going to do the same for icon left i'm going to say choose property icon left true and now if we go here if you if, if i want to disable the icon right i can just go ahead and do that disable icon left i just can just go ahead and do that 
I do not know, I no longer have to actually go ahead and create different variants for that. It's really that simple. Again, there's a lot to be, um, a lot we can talk about with these instance options, but I mean, that's just amazing. And then obviously you can just go ahead and reset certain specific properties for these changes that you're making on the properties. And obviously if you imagine, if you just had another variant, I'm gonna go ahead and add a new variant add new variant and we're going to say this is going to be secondary let's assume the first one was primary so i'm just going to go and change that to primary and let's just go ahead and actually change the stroke to be the button stroke and obviously it shouldn't be that big coming to the stroke obviously that's some interesting stuff as well which i have to talk about but just coming to the stroke obviously i can go ahead and i can define what the stroke is going to look like what the weight is going to look like uh, whether it's going to be one, two, whatever it is, I'm just going to keep it two. And let's go ahead and actually update the color to white as well. So here we have our instances. I'm just going to go ahead and include it here. Now imagine if you obviously disable the icon left, you can just go ahead and tweak the different variants without necessarily the properties getting messed up. So again, it's extremely awesome and it's extremely, extremely powerful. Okay, so that's a bit some stuff about like some of the Figma updates. Obviously there are some additional updates, like for example, password protecting your files. Previously that obviously was not allowed. Now you, anyone with the link in the password can actually access your file. You can give it a password and again, have someone access it. Obviously there are a lot of tons of updates. Let me see if there are any other Figma updates that I wanna highlight. Obviously there's one other update that I can just point out. And that's the fact that you can actually go ahead and star some of your files if you want to so you can just go ahead and star these files here and they're going to appear on the top left of your favorite files so again that's also really incredible so those are just some of the updates that i wanted to highlight obviously there are a lot of updates like with the branching with the different types of uh, languages with one other update okay one other update that i can probably highlight is imagine you have something like this you have a modal on top and you wanted to access this homemade text that's written here. Now, in order to do so, you can obviously go ahead and disable, hide this particular modal and then access this homemade text. But if you just wanted to access it, you can press shift O, that's gonna allow you to go into the outline mode and then you can just select it. You can select it if you want. Similarly, you can press shift, shift O, you can select any of the items that you want. And again, it's really awesome, even if something is actually placed on top of them. And I can't believe it that I was about to forget an actual awesome feature, which is one-sided borders. My friends, we have one-sided borders now. Imagine you can give top, bottom, custom borders. I can do custom, I can click on them, and I can decide that the top border is gonna be, let's say four, the border bottom is gonna be, let's say zero, and I can, like I can or 20 or whatever it is and I can do all of that stuff similarly I can obviously just go ahead and obviously that wasn't top that was left but you can do all of that magical stuff you can go ahead and you can just say uh, tab obviously in tabs we actually have these border bottoms and I can just give a stroke I can say that the stroke is going to be at the bottom and obviously I can just change the colors of the stroke and that again this is a active an active tab so, I mean, I mean, Figma has just gone out of its way. I'm not even sure. Probably Sketch and like XD guys are probably again very anxious or probably not anxious, maybe fretting right now. But I mean, it's really awesome for us Figma designers. So props to Figma. Again, really awesome stuff. So those are just going to be some quick updates that I wanted to highlight. I'm obviously going to do detailed videos about some of the additional updates as well, probably. But specifically for the auto layout and the properties, I will definitely do some videos. Um, so stay tuned for that. Do subscribe to hit the bell icon and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.